Welcome to the DKOU studio where I'm now joined by Dr. Michael Kraus and we are talking about robotics in surgery. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell me, why is there a renaissance of robotics in surgery? The question is, why do we call it a, a renaissance? In my opinion, robotics is just a consequence of the developments that we've been doing research on the last 20 years. When you think about that navigation in, in orthopedic surgery now exists since more than 20 years in clinical settings, the question is, why did it take so long that robots are now coming into the OR? Okay, so they've always been there. They have been there and the first robotic systems have caused some problems in the operation room because at the beginning of such developments, you encounter problems that you didn't see right from the start. So surgeons and patients were a little bit afraid of machines that probably didn't have all the right information they needed to perform the surgery well. So are they not afraid nowadays? The systems changed completely. Now the first robotic systems were more or less automated systems. They really performed yeah, critical steps of the surgery by themselves. And now we started with semi-automatic systems. So they're more or less just giving us guidance and the all crucial steps are then performed by the surgeon. Okay, is this the most recent development in robot surgery? Now the most recent development is that robotic systems can use much better data that are being created in the operation room itself. When you think about um, more or better imaging options that we have right now, like these huge systems that are doing CT-like images in the OR, and they're giving us new images and information that we haven't had for 20, 20 years ago. And the robotic systems now, they use these informations, giving them better help to locate themselves. This is the base for robotic surgery. Without these informations, robots will never be able to assist us or help us. What they do not have at the moment is an haptic feedback, which we surgeons, of course, have, and they have no attention. So this is still a long way till a robot is being able to perform soft tissue surgeries. Okay, but attention is one of the most important factors. Yeah, so there is much more development necessary, like better software, better imaging, better guidance, and more tactile feedback for the robot. What insight into patient outcomes are there? I believe that robots are able to work more precise than surgeons are, and they can do this the whole day, the whole night. They <laughs> never, they never falter. They never have any problems. Um, like if you stand for 10 hours, probably your own abilities might, might not be so good anymore. And the robot, well, he's doing just a job. So what developments do you predict for the future? I think that in the future, these semi-automatic systems will become more and more automated. And I believe that especially the, the minimally invasive techniques that we develop at the moment will help to really then uh, take robotic surgery on the next level. Like for example, in spine surgery, when you think about endoscopic surgery, um, this might be one of the, the future developments that a robot is then for the first time able to not just work on bone, which is a rigid system, but also probably might be able to remove a slip disc by using these very minimally invasive accesses to the spine. So it seems this will be interesting over the next decade also. I think we will see some very interesting developments in the next decade. And the research we do at the moment might, might help to get this technology further on the way. Okay, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for having me.